Hi, I'm Meredith Plummer, and welcome to my Storytime Studio. Imagine, if you can, Cincinnati 100 years ago. It was April 4th, 1915, Easter, and Cincinnatians were headed to churches across the city. To get there, they walked, traveled by carriage, took the incline, boarded a streetcar, or if they were wealthy enough, they drove one of those brand new automobiles. However, nine-year-old Ellen Wheeler traveled to the first congregational church of Cincinnati that morning, I can guarantee you she was dressed in her Sunday best. Taking her seat among the church pews, I imagine she daydreamed about what she would be doing that summer. Maybe she was daydreaming about visiting the zoo. What kind of animals would she see? Or maybe she was daydreaming about going to Coney Island and strolling down its beautiful boardwalk. Or maybe, like us, Ellen was just happy she could get out of the house for once. After the service, however, I'm certain Ellen's parents talked with other adults in the congregation. They discussed the merits of pacifism and whether the U.S. should get involved with the Great War. They gossiped about others who had just had a baby and who had just gotten married. And they wondered if the Red Legs would pull off a winning season. And I am certain that Ellen, like all of our wonderful children today, let her parents talk and talk without ever interrupting them or bugging them. Okay, maybe not. But that is when I imagined it happened. Mrs. Thayer approached young Ellen Wheeler and struck up a conversation. Perhaps they talked about their interests. Perhaps Ellen shared her daydreams for the summer. Or perhaps Mrs. Thayer just noticed that Ellen was looking a bit down. Whatever the reason, I imagine this is when Mrs. Thayer gave young Ellen Wheeler a potted plant. Fast forward 20 years, and now Ellen Wheeler is Ellen Hall. The country is now in the throes of the Great Depression. Many in our country can't afford food for their table or a roof over their heads. Seeing the despair all around, Ellen Hall decides to do something about it. No, she can't feed all the hungry. And no, she can't house all the homeless, but she can at least bring a little joy into someone's life. She can at least bring a little joy into a child's life. Ellen begins giving potted plants every Easter to the children at her church, our church, just as Mrs. Thayer had given her a plant that Easter in 1915. And over time, the tradition grew. In the late 20th century, Margaret Emshoff expanded the tradition so that religious education graduates and adults could also receive flowers. Margaret also ensured the flower tradition would continue long after her death by leaving a bequest with the stipulation that the money she left would be used first and foremost for Easter flowers. Just as we have the seed to thank for giving us such wonderful flowers, we have these three women, Mrs. Thayer, Ellen Hall, and Margaret Emshoff, to thank for giving us our wonderful flower tradition. Their kindness and generosity planted a seed in this congregation that has grown many branches. Their seed reminds us that there are still good people in this world that we have the power to do good in this world, that simple acts of kindness matter, and that beauty, if you look for it, is all around us. 
I dare say we need this knowledge now more than ever. Today, I can't give you real physical potted flowers. But if you check your email, you'll find a bouquet waiting for you. From all of us to all of you, with love.